Hello everyone, I'm back with another tech video. This is going to be a video about ragdashing. Um, ragdashing was discovered quite a while ago now, but uh, I haven't done this video until now because it's still not very consistent. But a lot of people have been asking to me to do a tutorial on ragdashing, so I figured I would do it anyway. So the first thing you need to know about ragdashing is that in the best case scenario, all you're going to be doing is converting your vertical momentum into horizontal momentum, which means that um, before you do a ragdash, you have to be in the air and falling towards the ground. Um, I like to do uh, a ragdoll jump before I do a ragdash, um, just to make it a little bit easier, but you don't have to. You can just do normal jump and then go into it. Um, to actually do a ragdash, um, what you're going to want to do is, as you're falling, before you hit the ground, you're going to want to hit ragdoll like this. Um, Usually you want to hit ragdoll somewhere near the, the, the ground, um, not too high in the air, although it will work if you do it high in the air. Um, and then after you've hit ragdoll, you can't see me doing it, but you want to hold down um, or crouch. And this way, when you exit ragdoll, you'll be able to keep all your horizontal momentum um, without slowing back down. Because normally, if I, um, if I walk to the right and I stop holding right, I'll immediately stop or I'll stop very quickly. But if I start walking right and I start sliding, you'll notice that I keep sliding for quite some distance. And that's the mechanic that we're using to maintain our speed out of a ragdash. Um, the last thing you need to do after you've ragdolled and you're holding down is right after you hit the ground, you want to hit jump. Um, it's very important that you get the timing right on when you hit jump. Um, you basically want to do it as the face of your duck is slamming into the ground. Um, that's the the correct timing um, and with some practice you'll get the timings down it's honestly quite hard even um, though you have to get lucky um, again I'll explain it one more time when you're in the air um, as you're going down you hit ragdoll and then while you're ragdoll you hit um, you hold down or you hold crouch and then after you hit the ground you hit jump so something important to note is that although you will be converting your vertical momentum into horizontal momentum, there is a point of diminishing return. So like if I use this spring up here and I'm falling from all the way up there, um, I'm not going to get a lot more speed out of a ragdash than I would if I had just jumped or done a ragdoll jump normally. Um, and there's also a pretty big downside is that the timing gets much harder the higher up you fall from. So I wouldn't really recommend trying to go for really big jumps if you want to get a ragdash. Um, even just a small jump will work fine usually. But again, even if you do all the inputs correctly, sometimes you just don't get super lucky. Recording this does make it a little bit harder, but um, I'll show you some clips of some good ragdashes that I get, and I'll slow one down for you so that you can see it in slow motion. So I don't really have any good examples for maps that you can use this tech on. Um, you're free to go and test it on some maps yourself to find maybe places that you can skip over, but I couldn't really find any obvious spots. But I did want to make this challenge map here just to demonstrate um, how, how much faster you go with a ragdash. It's not a significant amount, even though it looks like a lot, but um, in speedrunning, like on individual levels, I would say that ragdashing could potentially be very useful, especially on maps like Obstacle Course, um, where there's a lot of space to do it. And maybe in upcoming custom maps um, from the next version, there might be opportunities to ragdash and speedrunning. So this level here, it takes exactly 3 seconds and 39 um, hundredths of a second to complete. So anytime um, that's faster than than three seconds and 39 hundredths of a second you'll know came from ragdashing. So if I do a ragdash here, you'll see that it takes three seconds and 23 hundredths of a second to finish it there. Which saved quite a bit of time, that's like 
more than 0.1 seconds and you can even do multiple if you so wanted to but sometimes you'll notice there I didn't get the second one so it actually slowed me down quite a bit which is something you'll want to watch out for there it slowed me out a lot that was a good one 309 so that saved exactly 30 hundredths of a second so 0.3 seconds um, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I don't really have much else to say about it. If you have any questions, uh, make sure you leave them in the comments. I'll try and respond. It's not a super easy tech to pull off, and it's going to re require a lot of practicing. Um, but that's about it. See ya.